Good afternoon, geometry students. I hope you are having a fantastic week. I have been thinking about you today. We're still finishing up quarter two, but I've been thinking of you because quarter three is just around the corner and I miss you guys. Um, so I can't wait to work with you again. We are gonna do notes today for section 7.2 in our geometry book, which is titled Properties of Parallelograms. So um, as usual, all that you need to have with you is your paper and a pencil or pen, and we'll go ahead and take some abbreviated notes today. Um, today we're learning about the properties of a parallelogram. So I think the most helpful way to talk about this, this would be in the context of a conditional statement. So a conditional statement, as you may recall, is when we have an if and a then. So the conditional statement that we're going to be looking at today is when we say if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, parallelogram, then several different things are going to be true. So um, rather than repeat the if every single time, I'm just gonna list all the things that are then true. So then several things are true. We know that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Now, I know there's a lot of writing involved here, but it's super important to know all the properties of a parallelogram. There are several. In two lessons from now, we're gonna switch the order where we say, for example, if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So it will be helpful to have these written out in this format for you later. Okay, another thing that is true is that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Another true statement about parallelograms is the consecutive interior angles are supplementary now, some of you may have forgotten what supplementary means. Um, can you think back to quarter one and see if you can remember what does supplementary mean? Supplementary means that the angles add up to 180. Okay, another thing that is true about a parallelogram is the diagonals bisect each other. Now one thing we haven't yet mentioned that is considered really just the definition of a parallelogram versus say just a property is that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So the reason it's called a parallelogram is because both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So it's super important to know all these features. I think that's five of them that we have now. And we're gonna be using these throughout the rest of the chapter. So make sure that you have these down. Pause the video uh, if you need to, because we're gonna do some examples now that assume that we understand um, all of these features. Let's go ahead and look at example one. So example one is to find the value of X and Y. So we're gonna draw a parallelogram. And this would be assuming that we were given that the figure is a parallelogram. So assuming that this figure is a parallelogram, how would we solve for X and Y? Think if you can, about what equations you might set up to solve for X and Y. Well, we know that the opposite sides are congruent, so I know that X minus four has to equal 22, and also that Y plus five has to equal 13. 
then I would just add four to get X is 26, and I would subtract five to get that Y is eight. So that uses the feature that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Let's go ahead and look at another example. Again, this is assuming that we are dealing with a parallelogram and we've got the angles labeled in this example. So one angle is Y plus 10. The angle opposite it is 2Y minus 40 and a third angle is 4X. Now in this particular case, we have to be a little bit strategic about what we do first. Uh, does anybody know what the first step would be here? What must we do first? Well, we know that the opposite angles are congruent and both of these expressions involve Y. So the first thing that we need to do is set these equal to each other. Then we can subtract Y from each side and add 40 to get that Y is 50. So that's how we can solve for Y. Once we find out that y is 50, then we can plug it back in here. 50 plus 10 is 60. So I know that that angle is 60 degrees. Then I can use another feature of parallelograms, and that is that the consecutive interior angles add up to 180. So I know that 60 plus 4x has to equal 180. These are consecutive interior angles. If I subtract 60 from each side, I get 4x is 120. And when I divide by 4, I get that x is 30. Okay, we're going to do three more examples here. The next problem is a little bit of a word problem. So I'll go ahead and tell you this example, example number three. You don't have to write down the words, but you should write down the, the diagram and the work that I show on the board. The measure of one interior angle of a parallelogram is 20 more than three times the measure of another angle. Find the measure of each angle of the parallelogram. So what I like to do in this case is just go ahead and draw a parallelogram. And it says that one angle uh, is 20 more than three times the measure of another. So let's just have X be one of the angles. And if I wanna be 20 more than three times X, the other angle could be represented by the algebra expression 3X plus 20. Now I'm gonna go back to what we talked about a minute ago, and that is that the consecutive interiors have to add up to 180. So x plus 3x would be 4x, and then I would subtract 20, 4x equals 160, and divide by 4, and x would be 40. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do two more examples, and I'm really looking forward to going over the homework with you in class because that will give us more of a chance to, you know, ask questions back and forth and all that. In example number four, we have a parallelogram and some of the angles have them labeled, but not all of them. So I'm gonna take a minute to set this up and then you should copy it down too. This is parallelogram A, B, C, D, where the diagonals meet in the middle is labeled with an E. And then we have two angles at the top that are 40 degrees and 35 degrees. So take a minute, make sure you have that down. And then let's do some of the math here. All right. So, Let's go ahead and find the measure of angle B, E, C. We can kind of trace this out a little bit if we go from B to E to C, and we can see that this is the angle that they're asking about here. Now, in order to do this, I do need to remember that vertical angles are congruent. 
So I can notice that in this triangle up here, two of the angles are 40 and 35. If I add them together, I get 75. I know that all three angles in a triangle add up to how much? All three angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if these two are 75, and I take 180 minus 75, I'm going to get 105. So this angle has to be 105. And since BEC is right across from that, it's a vertical angle with that one, this one is also going to be 105. Okay, the next question we're asked is for the measure of angle ABC. So let's kind of look at where that angle goes. If we go from A to B to C, we're looking for this angle right here. So in order to do this, we're going to have to kind of work our way around the triangle. Let's fill in some missing information to see what else we can find. I know that um, this angle and this angle right here have to form 180 degrees. So this is going to be 75 degrees here and 75 degrees here. Let me put the point E there. Now, another kind of tricky thing that we need to be able to see is that because a parallelogram has opposite sides that are parallel, we need to remember what we learned last quarter about two parallel lines crossed by a transversal. And we need to be able to see that opposite alternate interior angles are congruent. So this angle will be 35 and that one will be 35. We can also do the same thing with the other two sides. So these two lines right here are parallel. And if I look at this transversal here, I can see that alternate interiors need to be congruent, so that one is 40. And we can continue to work our way around the triangle. So, um, let's see what another good one to show you would be. Um, we know then that in order for all of these angles, oh, and they also tell us, if we notice here on the diagram, and I, I didn't show this to you in the beginning, but it's on my paper, we're also given with part of the problem that this big angle right here, angle BCD is 100 degrees, that's part of the given information for the problem. So I can fill in then that 100 minus 40 is 60, which is going to make um, this angle 60. And now I can finally get to angle uh, A, B, C, uh, because I know that 60 plus 75 is 135, and then if I take 180 minus 135, I get 45 degrees for this angle right here. So A, B, C is 45 plus 35, which is 80 degrees. And then the last one, the measure of angle D, B, A. We probably have already found that. Let's look here. DBA is 45. Now, I could have done this a lot shorter, this angle ABC, uh, to find 80. If I had seen on my notes that the 100 degrees for this angle was given to us already, because I know that these two have to add up to 180, but I would have needed to kind of fill in the rest of the chart anyway, so in a way I'm, I'm glad that I didn't notice that. We do need to be able to label any of those angles based on just the given information. Okay, we have one more example. That was the fourth example. Let's look at example number five. 
Um, in example number five, the question relates to the diagonals of the parallelogram. So we've got parallelogram A, B, C, D. And the question is to find the value of S and T. So as you guys know, I'm horrible at drawing S's, so I'm going to make my S look like that. Um, that's 3S there. This is 27. This part of the diagonal is 33, and this part is T plus 3. Now, if you look back at your notes for the properties of a parallelogram, what does it say about the diagonals? If you look at your notes, you're going to notice that the diagonals bisect each other. So this piece and this piece need to be the same length, and these two pieces need to be the same length. So I know that 3s is equal to 27, or dividing by 3s is 9. And I also know that t plus 3 is equal to 33. So when I subtract 3, I get that t is 30. There is lots that we can do with parallelograms, but I just kind of wanted to give you those five examples as a good starting point. And then what we will do is, um, in the homework, go over a lot more examples. Thank you so much for taking notes and have a good day. Bye.